Let us do a few exercises to recap what we've learned so far. Um, so the first example I would like us to do is a conditional, uh, where I give you a Python program, and I would like us to kind of write this code, um, translate this code into Python. This is something similar that you will do in the homework. So it's a good exercise to do um, right now. So we have this code. I'm going to copy it. Uh, and I'm going to do... Okay, so I do lang bracket. And I can write a multi-comment, multi-line comment, which in racket is uh, like so. So this would start the comment, and this ends the comment, and anything in between is ignored. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do line by line this code, right? So first thing we're going to do is define n to be 16. Then we can even write this next to it. Next thing we're going to do is this conditional, right? And as we've learned, uh, we can write a conditional with if this happens, then write this. If this happens, then write that. But because there's a return, this works like an if-then-else, right? If this happens, do this. Otherwise, do this. Otherwise, do that. So we kind of learned a, a construct that allows you allows us to express something akin to this, but in racket, right? What was that? Try to answer it by yourself. Uh, maybe pause the video, and when you're ready, uh, hit play. Okay, I hope your answer was a uh, cond block, so a conditional block. So what we do, if you recall, the syntax is a bracket for each branch, so it will represent the condition and the code. And because in in Python, you have to return code to, or to, when you have a function, essentially. This is kind of like the body of a function, right? So if we want the function to return a value, you have to write return. But in record, because it's an expression-based language, you don't need to do that. So instead, what we do is we just put the, the results of the return, right? So in this case, we would need to write this condition. So now the question is, how do we write this condition? So we would have some equal. So as we've learned, the, the equal in, in racket is written with equal. So on the left-hand side, we have something. And on the right-hand side, we have zero, right? Uh, and on the left-hand side, what we have is this, the modulo. And the modulo, you can write in racket with modulo. Um, and on the left-hand side, you have n. On the right-hand side, you have 15. So if the modulo of 15 is, divis is divisible by, by um, if n is divisible by 15, then what we do, we return fizzbuzz. So you can do fizzbuzz. So we return that. Otherwise, equal modulo n 3, right, uh, 0. Then we return fizz. Um, and modulo n5, we return uh, buzz. So we really don't care much what this does, right? But then in the last case, we're here. So this, you can consider this to be an else. What we do, we just return n. Uh, wait, I kind of forgot a few parentheses. So in the homework, you're given a Python expression, uh, and then you're asked to convert that into racket or translate it, trans translate it into racket. And that's something like, like this. It would be something similar to this. Uh, okay, so if I run this code, racket conditionals, you get 16. Um, in this case, because 16 is not a is not divisible by 15 nor by 3, nor by 5, but if I were to do 5, I would get 15, I would get fizzbuzz. If I were to do um, maybe um, 9, I would 
get fizz, and if I get 10, uh, I would get buzz. Right, so let's put what we had before just so that when I make this available online, you have the code. And this is basically, it's very simple. It's, it's basically the, the most complicated thing is how do I write this code, the conditional into the equivalent in, in rec. Um, and then equals becomes equals, module becomes module. So it's pretty simple. And return kind of goes away because everything is an expression. So this essentially means return n. Okay, so we're done with this. Pretty cool. Let's look at the next example. So this is the code I wrote. Um, next thing that I want to ask, it's going to be the second exercise. I'm going to write here, exercise one. Now I'm going to write exercise two. And a bit of space, a bit of breathing space. Okay. So now, now what we ask is as follows. Actually, this is simpler to explain in the, um, in the slides. I'm going to change it back to the slides. So the question is, how many evaluation steps should we expect? And we actually did something very similar uh, in the past video where we evaluated um, pi, right? We had pi times something. So when we have an expression, a define, right? The idea is that we have a program here, right? And we know that this is a program because it has terms. And in this case, it has two terms. It's missing the pound lang racket, but in all of my examples, that will be absent. Um, so what we have now, we have a define, and then we have an expression that is being, uh, eval it's being um, evaluated, which is just a function call. So first one, we're defining x, and the body of x, the um, variable definition, is going to be bound to what the, whatever results from this expression. And in this case, it's a function call. So is this function call ready to be evaluated? Yes, because both of its arguments are, but this whole thing still has to evaluate, right? So what we do is left to right, top to bottom. So first we're going to do evaluate this top to bottom. Um, and in terms of expressions, we're going to evaluate this expression, which as we've just seen is ready to evaluate because it's a function call and both things have to evaluate. So the first step, I guess in the code is, is easier. First step that we want to do is we have all this, right? So, Step one. So first step would be evaluate this first sub-expression, which in this case would be 100, right? And then second step, we're going to evaluate, this is a value, and this is a variable definition, right? So now this is ready to evaluate. So if it's ready to evaluate, now we know that uh, this would be x2, so this would be x equals 100, right? Um, but something more is happening, which is the result of this becomes void, right? So we can even write void just to make it clear. But this would be the val the runtime value of void, which is pound uh, void. That's something you cannot, just by convention, that's what it is. Um, okay. Uh, and then the other thing we have is something like this. Of course, this is not valid record code now because X is undefined in this piece of code. So actually, let me comment this out. Let me comment this out. So now I'm going to comment this out. So next step is step three. Um, and now we have this expression, right? So this went away. Uh, and now we only have this expression, right? Uh, and this expression we evaluated from left to right. So first thing we need to do is evaluate all the arguments. So is x ready to evaluate? Is it a value? And your answer should be no, it's not a value because variables our expressions, they need to be evaluated. So the first thing we need to do is actually replace x by 
its value, which is 100. Okay, and then we go to step four. <clears throat> so this is going to be the next expression we get. So now we have an addition. First argument, is it a value? Yes. Is the second argument a value? No. So we need to evaluate that, right? So next thing we need to do is <coughs> replace this by 8. Okay. So is this function a value? No. So there's one more step to go. Step 5. Right? So... But is the function plus, function call to plus, ready to evaluate? Yes, because both of its arguments are values. So in this case, it would be 1 and 108. Okay, so this is the only step that is uh, bad. So we're going to kind of undefine this. We're going to undefine this. We're going to see 108 multiple times. First one's for this, second one for this, third one, and fourth one. One, two, three, four. Okay. And these are how many steps there are in terms of the evaluation. So now we have five steps, and here I just highlight what is going on step by step. Oh, actually in the code, there's a typo. I will fix it before I upload it. It should be 100 and not 20. Oh, actually, I'm a dummy, because I, <laughs> I wrote, what did I do? Ten times two, so it should be twenty. That's correct. So why, why did I do a hundred? Oh, I did a hundred? Okay, I just wrote a, a different number. I should have written it. Twenty. Oh, okay, I see where I did the mistake. Okay. So then this should be 20. Let me just fix it because the slides are correct. I just did a, a copy-paste error. Okay. Okay, fine. Um, you may be wondering why I don't comment this out. And that's that's a valid question. And the reason we don't is because there you cannot define two variables twice. So if I try to do this, we actually get an error. Look, it says identify already defined x. Okay, so in line 32, which is here. Um, so that's why I did. I don't. I only have one definition. Okay. So this is the original expression. If un uncommented, it breaks step one. Okay. And that's basically it. Okay, so I fixed the typo, and we're good to go. Okay, um, and then finally, just to recap, this is our um, the record language as we know it. So we have a program that is, actually this should be terms, and then expressions can be all of this, plus, um, oh wait, to do variables are and expressions. Oh yeah, this is just to highlight what I was talking about in terms of variables need to be evaluated. Uh, this seems a bit updated. I'll kind of fix it so that it's exactly what we have. It should be terms here. Um, and that's basically it. And variable declarations as we had before. So I'll make sure this uh, the specification of record is fine. Uh, but the key point, or actually I'll just remove this because there's no point in this being here. So basically, the key point I wanted to make is just that variables are considered expressions, so don't forget that in, in, in our steps. It's basically the only point that is um, subtle. Uh, but we've all, this is the second exercise we do for this, um, this subtlety, so we should be good. Okay, I hope you had fun. Um, next, we're going to talk about function declaration. <laughs>